uh, it's the, the first one is called the, the Burmese labeling technique. I don't know if, again, if these things are familiar or if you, if you know something about them or want to throw something else in, that's fine. The <laughs> Burmese labeling technique is actually comes from the Vipassana background. And uh, so what I'm going to start to do is saying about self-love. And the example I'm going to give is actually with a client that I was working with for quite some time. And, and he uh, was uh, stuck in this sort of repetitive pattern of having a very low-grade depression that wasn't ameliorating no matter what we talked about or what we dealt with. And part of the problem was this, um, what I would call, uh, he had this unrelent unrelenting standards that he was always, this little voice in the back of his head that was always telling him that he had to be better or look better or whatever he was doing, he was not quite doing it well enough. And it was a constant sort of chatter in the background. And um, the reason I, why I bring up this example is actually for two reasons. One is that oftentimes with gay men, we do have this little voice that, that says we're not good enough because society has told us we're not good enough. So we oftentimes develop our own little voice uh, and it's telling us that we're not good enough. But when you're having that little voice, it's very hard to experience genuine self-love. And I realized because this person was so bright and was always thinking all the time that we weren't making much headway. Uh, so one session, I had suggested that we actually, if he was open to it, that we do a little exercise. And, we, um, and he agreed to it, and we ended up leaving the office. I, I, my office is right by Union Square. Went down to Union Square, and I taught him this technique, this... Um, what is that? Burmese labeling technique. And it's very simple. All you do is, is, is rather than being, as you're walking along, what you do is you uh, label the experience that you're having. And you, you pay attention in particular to your sensations, uh, feelings, uh, but whatever comes up, you don't really, you just label it and then you move on to the other one. So as you're walking, you might be saying, Feeling warmth, if it's sunny. Uh, hearing noise. Feeling sadness. Thinking. Feeling pressure. You know, if you're, you know, and, and you just gradually, slowly, slowly, as you're walking, you label these various sensations. And what it does is it, it pulls you away from that, that part of your voice which is constantly going and puts you into your immediate experience. And people often think that that the practice of uh, Buddhism, or the that a practice has to only occur in a quiet room. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's helpful to realize that mm -hmm. mindfulness can happen all the time. Mm -hmm. And by doing the simple technique, we walked around Union Square a few times, came up in any, and what he reported was that, that, was that, that the voice disappeared and receded into the background. Not immediately, but the more that he, he walked around, the more that he had the experience of not having that constant voice. And, and the point was, was that for him to be able to uh, begin to love himself and to demonstrate that he loved himself, he had to have a different relationship to this voice. And th in order to do that, by being more mindful of his present experience, he was able to, to begin to show. Like if, if, so if you had a thought, you would just say, thinking. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't be really... You, you wouldn't be going on with the thought. You would just say thinking, and then you're, you're coming back to your immediate experience. And when you're really walking, and, and, and most of us are so much in our thoughts that we're not really aware of what's around us. And there's so much. We are, since our senses are being flooded with so many things. What often happens when people do this is you start to notice, you start to just notice your sensations so much more. You notice... The, the feel of the wind, you notice the temperature, you notice the, the pressure of maybe the clothes you're wearing, or, or you're just much more attentive to those things. Thank so you. it doesn't say that you, you don't think, but the focus is not on thinking. Thank you. It sounds like since we can experience so many sensations or feelings or thoughts at once, that it's whatever is predominant. Right. So um, the second technique, it, I don't really have a, a, a name for it, I just call it, but it, it was a technique I got from The Power of Now, which is Eckhart Tolle, who sort of synthesizes a lot of Buddhist ideas. It's also found in The Secret, and um, uh, it's sort of a, the positive affirmation, but 
The reason why I bring it up is, is the idea that uh, in psychology we have this idea that, that everybody, due to their childhood experiences, develops a story about themselves. And, and, and one way to think of these stories is that it, it becomes a, a schema. And the schema is sort of like a filter that everything that comes in to, through the filter gets interpreted by this story. So if you were a child that um, experienced maybe a threatening situation or something, you might begin to feel that people, you can't trust people. So then you have this filter that says people are untrustworthy, and, and, and you experience everything through that filter. And then when you interact with somebody, you automatically have, even before you get to know them, you, you already have that going in place. Now what's important about that is that that is also seen as the ego. This is, very, this is all completely ego-driven. And in most of what we do in the world, and a lot of actually Western psychology is, is all about sort of understanding the ego. But in, in Buddhist philosophy, there's this idea that there is a level of consciousness, which is, I, I don't really say, it well, transcends the ego, but um, is, a, is a different consciousness. It, it is focused on a different sense of who we are and how we're connected into the world. And it's not about... The, these, ex, these experiences from the past. 